Good day, my name is Tian Gildenhuis and in this video I would like to discuss the extremely important subject, especially in these end times we find ourselves in, entitled the spirit of fear. Because we do not understand that one of the signs of the times that we are finding ourselves in today, according to the word of God, is that people's hearts will fail because of fear over what's coming in the world and we see it all around us today. But my dear friends, it's all about our Lord Jesus Christ, so let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you in this day. Thank you, Lord. We know the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know you are here where we're busy with this recording, but you will also be there where people will be watching this video wherever they may be. And we pray, Lord, that you alone will be glorified. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking, but that you will be the one speaking in and through me, and that all our hearts will be open to the truth of the Word of God. And Father, thank you that you give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. You will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God, and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that you will cover us with your blood, that you will set up your angels all around us and that you yourself will be a wall of fire around about us wherever we are so that every place will be a safe place and that you can be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now by your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, all who know me know I always start with this verse in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13 and I only use the Old King James Version of the Bible. And my Bible says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And on this video, we will read what the Bible says regarding the spirit of fear and how it affects God's people in these end times. So we must read what it says and understand what it says just as it is written. Because in Matthew 22 verse 29, Jesus said, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And that's the problem that most of us have. We err, we make mistakes because we do not know our scriptures. And why do we not know our scriptures? Because we do not know the author of the scriptures. We are not in a personal, intimate relationship with the Creator God, Jesus Christ. And if you have not yet received Jesus Christ in your life, I also have a YouTube video on how do I give my life to Jesus Christ. But at the end of this video, there will also be a prayer that you can pray, but pray it from your heart to receive the Lord Jesus in your life as well, so that you can also stand up in the authority that you have in our Lord Jesus to resist the attacks of the Spirit that we will be discussing on this video. At number one, let us now discuss the spirit of fear. And we read in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So my brother and sister, if God has not given us the spirit of fear, where does the spirit of fear come from? Because we must always remember there are only two kingdoms upon this earth. The kingdom of light of God the Father, God in heaven, and the kingdom of darkness of the devil. So if God has not given us the spirit of fear, where does it come from? From the devil. And we must learn how the spirit works in these times that we are living in to try and bind not just God's children, but all the people upon the world. But because of our lack of knowledge... We did not know that Ephesians 6 verse 12 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the demonic hosts in the air, against demon spirits sent by Satan. And because we did not know this, we started giving the spirit of fear certain nicknames. Things like stress, anxiety, worry. But its origin still is the spirit of fear. Because anxiety is fear, stress is fear, worry is fear. While the Bible says very clearly we should not do that, we actually read in Proverbs 12 verse 25, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. And it's interesting to know that that word heaviness in the Hebrew used there, dehogo, means anxiety or fear. So fear in the heart of man maketh it stoop, what does that maketh it stoop refer to? The word there is shoho. It means to depress. 
That is bow self down, crouch, fall down flat. And one of the modern translations of the Bible actually gives us that verse in the following words. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. So heaviness, anxiety, and anxiety is what? It's fear. So fear in the heart of man causes depression. So what happens? The world says, no, depression is an illness. Depression is a sickness. If you are diagnosed bipolar depression, then you've got the sickness and you're wearing this label. While in the meantime, it is a demon spirit of Satan attacking your mind with thoughts of fear. And then you don't understand what's happening. So we try to drink some pills, but we must understand that we cannot get rid of any demon spirit by using any pills. The only pill that works for any demon spirit is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what we must learn. When we start to use the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sword of the spirit, the word of God, against the attacks of the devil and his demon spirits, we can be set free. But a pill cannot set me free from a demonic stronghold or being demonically oppressed by Satan and his demons. So we must learn what the Bible says regarding these things. But remember one thing, God hath not given me a spirit of fear. So many people say to me, but yeah, I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't fear, oh, but I stress a little about my work. I'm a bit anxious about my marriage and I'm, I'm a bit worried about my children's future. Yeah, that is fear, my brother or sister. And I actually see it in the, in the following way. Let me show you this picture. I see it like this, like an octopus. And it's not any spiritual significance as such. I just see it in this way that the head is the spirit of fear. The head of the octopus is the spirit of fear. And then, you know, an octopus has all these tentacles. And on these tentacles, you have all these different suckers. But I just saw it this way, that all these different tentacles and suckers refer to different kinds of fear. Fear of being vulnerable. Fear of what people think of me. Fear about my health. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection. Fear of the dark. Fear of not being accepted. Fear of loneliness. Fear of not being good enough, either for my friends or my colleagues or family or whatever. Fear of man. Fear about my finances. Especially in these times we find ourselves in today. Fear about my future or my children's future. Fear of death. And you can add a few more there if you want to. There are different tentacles and different suckers that the spirit of fear uses against us. And if you can keep us bound in our thoughts to think about all these things and to fear all these things, then we will not move because we are actually being transfixed because of our fear. I can't move. And you know, Job 3 verse 25 said, that which I feared came upon me. So we must start to learn what the Bible says about these things and what we should do against the spirit of fear with its different tentacles coming against us. Now the word fear is found 400 times in the Bible. The word afraid is found 193 times in the Bible. Now the Hebrew word for fear is yore, meaning to fear, morally to revere, causatively to frighten, affright, be or make afraid, dreadful, put in fear, fearful, fearfully or fearing. The word afraid in the Greek is phobio, where our words of, uh, um, phobias, the different kinds of phobias come from. It means to frighten, that is passively to be alarmed. By analogy, to be in awe of, that is revere, be sore afraid, fear exceedingly or reverence. So this fear, that comes from the devil, makes us not being able to move because eventually my fear is so huge in my mind because this is what we must understand. The battlefield is in the mind. And if Satan can make us afraid, then he can try to pull us away from God. We read it in Genesis 3 verse 9 and 10, the first time when Adam and Eve fell in sin and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So we must understand now, fear coming from the devil 
pulls us away from a living relationship with God. And we will look at what the fear of the Lord is all about. But we must understand the wrong kind of fear. If we do not fear the Lord, we listen to the devil and we start to do the things of the world. Then we start to accept the thoughts of fear that he puts into my mind. Then it also pulls me away because then I don't believe in God. God anymore. I start to believe my fear. And remember the word fear, somebody said to me once, F-E-A-R stands for actually false evidence appearing real. So don't let the false evidence appear real in your life. Be led by the word of God. Be led by your personal relationship with the living God, not by the fear of things not happening around you or happening in a specific way because Satan puts some thoughts in your mind and you rather listen to Satan's thoughts instead of taking them captive to the obedience of Christ. Now there are 62 verses in the Bible that use the words fear not and 28 verses saying be not afraid and four verses saying Thou shalt not be afraid. So that gives me a total of 94 verses actually saying that we should not be afraid. We should not fear. Don't be afraid of the things happening. I've heard people say that the phrase do not be afraid is found in the Bible 365 times once for every day of the year. Uh, I actually, because I listened to some people earlier in my life, used that phrase myself once or twice until I went and I had a look for myself and I could only find 94 verses that actually says do not be afraid or thou shalt not be afraid and that kind of thing so or fear not so I don't really find 365 verses saying do not be afraid but 94 verses are quite a lot if God repeats something 94 times in the Bible he is still very very serious about it so he does not want us to be afraid not to be afraid of the things of the world but Satan comes and he puts the fear of the world in us and of the things coming around us as I showed you the picture of that octopus with all his different tentacles and suckers so don't be sucked in my brother and sister stand on what the word of God teaches us because Luke 21 verse 26 is actually the verse that confirms that one of the signs of the end times that we will find ourselves in before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and this is what's happening people are looking at what's happening with this pandemic and everything going on around it all over the world and people dying and people worrying and people losing their jobs so what happens people's hearts are failing for fear because they're afraid of the future. They're afraid of, of dying because they have not ensured that they know where they are going when they die. So we must understand, we see the fulfillment of this verse before our very eyes. God's word is always true. Men's hearts today are failing for fear of those things which are coming on the earth. So we must know who we are in Christ so that we can resist these things. I'm showing you a slide now with two books that you can actually uh, get from the internet. You can order it from the internet. The one is A More Excellent Way to Be in Health by Pastor Henry W. Wright of the USA. And the other one is a book, Healing Begins with Sanctification of the Heart by Dr. M.K. Stradom. She's from Zimbabwe. And you can find these two books on the internet. And both these books and these authors actually say the same thing, namely that basically all diseases have a spiritual root behind it. And they explain in quite a lot of detail from the word of God how it happened and how the Lord showed them these things that when they prayed for people to be set free from certain spiritual roots, the people were healed physically as well. So you will do well to order these two books for yourself. But both these authors show that many of the spiritual roots of sicknesses today lie in fear, anxiety and stress. Because you fear, you are anxious and you stress, and I said it comes from the same root, it comes from the spirit of fear, what happens? Your body 
physically reacts in certain ways. Your heart starts to react in certain scientific ways. They explain it scientifically why these things then happen to your heart or to your brain or to your head. And then people die. They get strokes. They get heart attacks. And they wonder why. It's because of the fear, anxiety and stress that they get these things. So I'm not a doctor. I did not do all these studies that they did, but the material is out there. You don't have to believe me. Order these two books for yourself. Read it for yourself and let the Holy Spirit lead you regarding the truth of the fact that physical diseases have spiritual roots. And many of those spiritual roots are fear, anxiety and stress. So now the question is, how do we resist the spirit of fear? The Bible teaches us in James 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I want you to see what it says there. He will flee from you. Many people say, oh, but Lord Jesus, please take away the devil from me. The Bible says, no, you must submit yourself to God. You must resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And God repeats it in 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9, where Peter writes, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. So who must resist the devil? We must steadfast in the faith. What faith? Well, the Bible says in Galatians 2 verse 20, we live no more, but Christ lives within us if we have received the Lord Jesus in our lives. The Bible says in 1 John 4 verse 4, he that is within us is greater than he who is in the world. So who is in us? Jesus Christ, if we have received him, and he is the creator of God. So he is greater than Satan and all his demons coming against us, but we must resist him. Now the question is, how do we resist the devil? We can read the four Gospels over and over, and we will see Jesus is the example. Jesus never thought away a demon. He always spoke a word. Satan, it is written. It is written. So he always used the word of God as the weapon against Satan and his demons. So we must also speak out. So when a thought of fear comes into my mind, I say, Lord Jesus, I submit this thought of fear to you now. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of fear attacking me, whether it be fear of man, fear of failure, fear of not being good enough, fear of not passing my exams, fear of losing my marriage, whatever the fear may be, I resist you now and you will flee from me in the name of Jesus. I always say to people, this is grade one maths, one plus two equals three. The first condition is submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Give your thoughts, your mind, your life, everything you have submitted to God. That's the first condition. Then there is an instruction and the instruction is resist the devil. Then there is a promise and the promise is and he will flee from you. But the thing is this promise will not come to be if I don't do one plus two. So, Lord, I submit my thoughts to you. Satan, I resist the spirit of fear and you will flee from me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because I resist you, Satan, steadfast in my faith that I live no more. Yet Jesus Christ lives within me and you will flee not from me, but from Jesus Christ living within me. But then, my brother and sister, then you must know that you are in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself, that you have received him into your life. Because if we are still busy with religion, many times we were so busy with dead religion in our churches that we never entered into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And hear me today, religion is dead. Relationship with Jesus Christ is life. I discuss it in much more detail in, on my video on how do I give my life to Jesus Christ that you can also watch because it is an eternally important subject to really make your own because we will all die one day and then the question is where are you going when you die now we look at one of those verses that says thou shalt not be afraid and we find that in psalm 91 verse 5 to 10 and i also have a whole youtube video just on psalm 91 and these end times we live in that you can also watch if you would like now it reads as follows thou shalt not be afraid look at this now thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. 
a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. See, it's all about making the Lord your habitation. And if the Lord is your habitation, if you abide in the shadow of the Almighty, if you sit in the secret place of the Most High, then you will know you will not be afraid of these things, not be afraid of pestilences, of pandemics, of things coming upon the earth. I'm not afraid. Why? Because I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid to die. I'm looking forward to meeting my Creator the day that I die. So I'm not afraid of these things happening around us because I'm ready. But while I am still alive, I know that because I've made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habitation, no evil shall befall me. Neither any plague come nigh my dwelling, says my God. And I believe my God because he's still the same God that walked with Adam and Eve. He's still the same God that spoke to Abraham and Sarah. He's still the same God who spoke to Paul and Peter and all the other disciples. He's the same God that you and I serve to this very day. And he has not changed. So if he told them in the Old Testament, fear not, do not be afraid for these things. Guess what? He's saying the same thing to you and I to this very day. And we also read in Revelation 2 verse 10 that he says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Also these things coming around us and happening around us in these end times. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So even the martyrs, the people who are martyred for their faith, they will receive a crown of life from Jesus. So they will not even fear death. They will not fear walking to a guillotine or fear wherever the case may be, whatever will come across them. We should not fear these things. You and I, if we are ready for the rapture of our Lord Jesus Christ, this will, be not, will not be applicable to us in this time as well. Because if we are ready, Jesus will take us away from the tribulation coming from God. But in these times we find ourselves in, we are being persecuted by the world. And I also have a YouTube video on perseverance in faith to rest in Jesus that you can also watch where I explain this in much more detail. So I'm not going to discuss it here because I've already discussed it in detail. So my brother and sister, what are you and I doing with the attacks coming against our minds. Do we stand up in our authority and resist the spirit of fear? Or do we receive the spirit of fear? Do we accept it? Do we make it our own by speaking things over ourselves like, you know what, I was diagnosed as a bipolar, depressive, whatever. No, I'm sorry, I do not agree. It is not a sickness. It is a spirit of fear attacking you. And we must just find out and ask the Lord Jesus, where did that spirit get its root in my life? Why am I so afraid of the dark? Why do I sleep with the light on in the night? And, and why do I still drink antidepressants? Might it have been because many, many years ago, when I was five years old, I visited my grandfather and grandmother. And because I was naughty, they locked me in a, in a cupboard, in a dark cupboard. And now, 35 years later, they are both dead, but I'm afraid of the dark, so I sleep with the light on and I drink antidepressants and I think I'm a depressant and I'm a whatever name they give us, whatever label they hang around our necks. While in the meantime, the way to be set free of that heaviness that maketh my heart stoop, the anxiety that causes depression is to forgive my grandfather and grandmother to forgive them for what they did to me and for the fear that they allowed in my life. And then number two, to submit myself to God. And by forgiving them, I'm doing that. I'm submitting myself to God, forgiving my grandfather and grandmother, and then resisting the devil, saying to the spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus, I have now broken your hold and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus. And then you can go back to your doctor and say to the doctor, you know what, doctor, I have now dealt with, the root of my depression. I have forgiven those people who caused the fear in my heart. So please walk the road with me 
and lessen the dosage and lessen the dosage and lessen the dosage until the day that you walk out not having to use those pills anymore because you have now used the gospel, the word of God, the sword of the spirit against that lie that was spoken over you. So don't let people tell you you have to drink these pills for the rest of your life. That is not true. That is not freedom. That is bondage. Freedom is found in the word of God. God can set you free. So just remember you have to deal with the people that cause the fear in your heart by forgiving them. But then you must also resist and rebuke the spirit of fear. And in the end you will be free from using all these pills. I'm not saying for one moment take all your pills in one go and just chuck them. Except if the Holy Spirit tells you that. I'm telling you walk the road and tell your doctor. You've dealt with the spiritual root of that problem that Satan caused in your life so that you can eventually be set free from using any antidepressants because God came to set the captives free, not to keep them in bondage. At number two, let us now look at the fear of the Lord. Now this is a different type of fear. Luke 12 verse 5 says, But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. So we must fear the Lord because he's the only one that can do these things. I also have a YouTube video on hell is also real that you can also look at if you want because hell is definitely a place and it is definitely real. Our Lord Jesus spoke about it quite a number of times and he taught us about it. But we do not need to fear Satan and his demons. But we must have the fear of the Lord. And we read in the Bible approximately 27 or 29 times about the fear of the Lord. Let's look at a few of those verses. The first one is Psalm 111 verse 10 that says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. And I always remind the people if you read the word Lord in the King James Version, like that in capital letters, L-O-R-D. In the Hebrew, it is Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, because our Father's name in Hebrew is Yahweh. So the fear of Yahweh, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is not to be so afraid of God that you don't want anything to do with Him. The fear of the Lord is not to be so afraid of God that He will strike you with a lightning bolt. No, the fear of the Lord gives you wisdom. If you start to understand what the fear of the Lord is all about, you are starting to receive wisdom. And we read in Proverbs 1 verse 7 as well, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you start to live in the fear of the Lord, you are beginning to obtain wisdom and you are beginning to obtain knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge of what? Of what the word of God teaches us. And then that leads to the following. In Proverbs 8 verse 13 we read, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. So if you start to understand that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom of what the word of God teaches us, that will lead to you starting to hate evil. So it will not pull you away from God. It will pull you closer to God. And the closer you get to God and the more knowledge and wisdom you receive of who he is and how we fear him, it's a reverence, a love, a fear of the Lord that pulls us closer to him, then we will start to hate evil. And Proverbs 16 verse 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. You see? So if I live in the fear of the Lord and I have knowledge and wisdom of who he is and what he expects of us, I will depart from evil. So the fear of the Lord does not push me away from God. It pulls me closer to God, but he starts to push me away from evil. It makes me hate evil. It makes me to depart from evil. Proverbs 22 verse 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Look at this. 
So if I am humble like Jesus was humble, and I live in the fear of the Lord, I will receive riches and honor and life. From whom? From God Himself, who will bless me as His child, because I live in the fear of Him. I don't live in the fear of the devil anymore. I don't live in the fear of the things happening around the world anymore. I live in the fear of the Lord. It pulls me closer to God, to our Father Yahweh. And what happens? I start to depart from evil. I start to hate evil. And God starts to bless me in ways that that I've never seen before in my life. And we read in Revelation 15 verse 4, the people standing around the throne, those who did not receive the mark of the beast, and during the tribulation period of seven years that will come upon the earth, and they say the following, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. We must understand this. Only God is holy. Nobody else. Nothing else. Only God is holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Yes, by that time, when we reach Revelation 15, in the time of the tribulation and people being set free and people dying for their faith, the ones who were left behind, who were beheaded, I explain it in much more detail on my video on Jesus is coming again, the rapture and the second coming. So there I discuss this, that they will be beheaded and then they will end before the throne of God and they will be part of this choir singing the song. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For all nations shall come and worship before thee. This is what we must understand. All nations shall worship before God one day because God is the creator of heaven and earth. We will not stand before the throne one day or be in heaven one day in different religious groups. Only the ones having received the Lord Jesus Christ will be in heaven. Any other faith that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the only Savior will not be in the heaven of our Father who created heaven and earth. They will be thrown in the lake of fire, the Bible says. So it is a very important matter to ensure that you, you give your life to Jesus Christ because He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And because His mercy and His grace is so awesome, He gives us the opportunity to be saved, but then we must choose for Him and not for any other faith. And then we must understand, if we are in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we find in 1 John 4 verse 18 it is written, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth, is not made perfect in love. So my brother and sister, if you want to be set free from fear, start to walk in the fear of the Lord. Because the closer you get to Jesus, and the more you live in His perfect love, His perfect love will cast out all fear. And the fear will not grab a hold of you anymore, because you will resist the devil in the authority that you have, in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. Because, as I quoted earlier, Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So if Jesus Christ lives within me, he is perfect love. So if perfect love lives within me, why should I fear anything? coming against me, physically, spiritually, financially, or in my body, whatever the case may be, I need not fear, thou shalt not fear, be not afraid, because these things come from the devil, but yes, fear the Lord, live in his wisdom, and in his knowledge, and you will know, there is an eternity waiting, an eternity of glory, to be with him, and remember, Jesus is not a dead God. We read in Revelation 1, verse 17 and 18, He uses the words, Fear not. Again, you see, there it is. Fear not, Jesus says. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. 
Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My brother and sister, only Jesus Christ makes it possible for you and I to live in eternity. But then we must get to a place of being in a personal relationship with Him, of receiving Him into our lives. And when we receive Him into our lives, we can take up our authority that He gives us and teaches us about in His Word. And then we can resist the spirit of fear coming against us. No matter what the tentacles of that spirit is that he tries to use against me, I resist the head. I resist the spirit of fear. I don't resist fear of death. I resist the spirit of fear. I don't resist fear of the darkness. I resist the spirit of fear. So no matter what tentacle he wants to use against me, what sucker he wants to grab hold on me, I resist the spirit of fear. I submit myself to God. I resist the devil and he will flee from me in the power and in the name of Jesus Christ because we do not serve a dead God. We're not busy with dead religion anymore. We are in a personal, intimate relationship with the living God and only he makes it possible for us to live in victory over the attacks of the enemy. And I pray that this message will take you by the heart and that you will ensure that you Pray this prayer that we will show you now so that you can receive the Lord Jesus in your life and then take up your authority against the enemy, the spirit of fear and all his other tentacles coming against you because we can do all these things through Christ who gives us strength. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Thank you that you want to set the captives free. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will take this message and break it open in the hearts of your people, that people will not be bound by the spirit of fear anymore. Lord, we know it's a fulfillment of these end times, but your own children don't have to fear because you say to your children, fear not, I'm the first and the last. And will you say to your children many, many times, that we should not be afraid. We should not fear the things of the world. But yes, Lord, we fear you. And we pray that the fear of the Lord will be the beginning of knowledge and wisdom to people watching this message. And that they will start to live in your fear. Get a new love, a new reverence for you, Lord, that pulls them closer to you. And that they will then start to depart from evil and hate evil. And that you will add to them the blessings and the riches and life that you want to give them according to your word. So that you can be glorified, Lord. Nobody else. All the glory, all the honor goes to you alone. And Lord Jesus, we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen.